So Chicago is a pretty cool city, huh? Thank you. That was, I, just, I took a pandering course earlier. And, <laughs> and they said to say that on stage. How much is a house here? N what's that? Nine? Nine what? Nine dollars? Oh my God. Note to self, talk to someone else. <laughs> Apartment just sold in New York City, bought by a hedge fund manager, $238 million. 24,000 square feet. If I had a 24,000 square foot apartment in New York, I'd still be telling people from out of town, I'm not really set up for guests. <laughs> yeah, it's just a one bedroom apartment with uh, 53 home offices. Yeah, you're welcome to crash, but you'd be sleeping with your head on a fax machine. <laughs> God, the upkeep must be ridiculous on that place. You'd be at home, huh? You want to go to the movies today? I'd love to, but we really need to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy 35,000 Swiffer sheets. <laughs> I can't even imagine a 24,000 square foot apartment. My apartment is 800 square feet, and I'm a celebrity. Do I have to become a hedge fund manager to get a bigger place? Or worse than that, find out what a hedge fund manager is? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Tried like 500 times. People start explaining to me, you know, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'll try again in six weeks. <laughs> Everything's expensive in New York. I went to buy new glasses, eyeglasses, went to the boutique place. I go, how much are these glasses? The guy said they're $1,000. I was like, oh, that's kind of expensive. He's like, well, think of it this way. You'll have them for three years. It's like a dollar a day. Well, when you put it that way, it sounds more expensive. If I asked you how much these glasses are, and you said, you have to give me a dollar a day every day for three years. I'd be like, wow, that is a pricey pair of glasses. I'm doing the math in my head. I'd say that's roughly $1,000. Why don't I take $1,000 by two pairs of $200 glasses and also a round trip ticket to Barcelona? <laughs> no, I'm glad we're traveling again. A few years ago, I went to Bangkok. Almost didn't go. Saw a video on YouTube called The Scams of Bangkok. This dude was a little paranoid. He's like, if you go to a museum and you see someone smiling, total scam. <laughs> If you go to a restaurant, they have noodles on the menu, your identity's just been stolen. <laughs> if you show up at your hotel, there's a front desk, call Interpol. <laughs> Classic flim flam. <laughs> Can't believe I've, I've barely done any crowd work. What do you think? How's it going? What's your name? Chris. What do you do, Chris? Uh, design engineer. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't think I want to do crowd work tonight. <laughs> design engineer? What does that mean? I design recess lights, track lights. Okay. All right. I'm in the business. I get this. <laughs> I was just looking at how great these recess lights are tonight. It was good talking to you, Chris. <laughs> we just took a recess from being funny for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. I pulled that one out, huh? Been trying out Airbnbs on the road. You gotta read those listings very closely. They always start out good as like on a tree-lined street close to shops and restaurants. Oh, I like that. <laughs> You'll have the whole place to yourself. Oh, I like that. I let my neighbor's store his guns in my linen closet. <laughs> yeah, not sure how I feel about that. So he might pop in from time to time. 
definitely don't like that. But don't worry, as a key, ooh, that makes me worry. Also, there's a great home theater system. You're not allowed to use it. Stay out of the kitchen. And there's a python under the sofa. You must feed him 15 times a day. But to reiterate, you'll have the whole place to yourself. Close to shops and restaurants. I always get nervous booking an Airbnb because my picture's in my profile. I know the host are at home going, oh my God, honey. You're not gonna believe who's sleeping in our attic tonight. I'll give you a clue, small but pivotal role in Pootie Town. Todd Berry's sleeping in our attic? Yeah, he can't afford a hotel, I guess not. Let's get the good pillows out for him. I uh, stayed at a hotel in Los Angeles. And when I got back, I realized I left my toiletry back at the hotel in Los Angeles, and it was a really nice one, sent to me by the Cartoon Network, had cartoons all over it. I wanted it back, I called up the hotel, I go, I was in room 318, I left my toiletry back, it's got cartoons all over it. The guy's like, oh yeah, we found that. I was like, great, can I get it back? He's like, can you describe the cartoons? <laughs> Did you think I was calling you on the off chance? <laughs> that someone left behind the toiletry bag with cartoons on it? Like I'm in the market for one, don't know where to find one, so I'm calling hotels all day long, hoping for a miracle. Maybe I got an anonymous tip. Some guy comes up to me in an alley, Todd, don't ask who I am, but if you're in the market for half a bottle of dandruff shampoo and five dusty Viagras, call this hotel, tell me in room 318. You left your toilet, your bag, it's got cartoons all over it. What kind of cartoons? They'll never ask you that. Why would they ask you that? It'd be crazy to ask you that. <laughs> Stray clap there. <laughs> Took an Uber in the Midwest, and at the end of the ride, the driver said, sir, I owe you an apology. I was like, for what? He goes, I'm sorry I didn't talk during the trip. I really like to focus on my driving. It's like, wow, there are apologies I've been waiting 35 years for. <laughs> this guy hits me with the most unnecessary apology ever. <laughs> it's like, sir, if you're apologizing for not making me talk to a stranger for an hour and a half, guess what, all's forgiven. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't always go that way. Maybe sometimes like, sir, I want to apologize for not talking during the trip. Yeah, what was with that, man? <laughs> you see me back here all lonesome? Just a man and his French horn? Mm. I played the French horn in middle school. So I was able to nail that tone. At least the guy apologized, oh, that was nice. I like apologies. I even like shitty apologies. My favorite shitty apology is the convenient apology, where someone only apologizes because they ran into you. It's always something that happened a long time ago. It's like, hey, Todd, I'm glad I ran into you, man. I uh, remember we were at that party recently. That was 1991. <laughs> I got a little drunk, you got really drunk. I said a few things I shouldn't have said. You said a lot of things you shouldn't have said. I think I beat the shit out, you did beat the shit out. <laughs> anyway, I just want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Scott, and to think this wouldn't have happened if I went to my usual frozen yogurt shop. <laughs> Let's do some more crowd work. <laughs> Whoa. Calm down, seven o'clock show. <laughs> uh, 
What's your name? Brenna. Brenna, B-R-E-N-N-A. What do you do, Brenna? I'm an interior designer. Holy shit. You got any stories? Really? In the car? The car you were driving in? In the car. You looked outside and there was a bear in the car. Some would argue that you weren't looking outside. I looked outside inside the car. That's a good story. Mm, cut that one. <laughs> Cutting room floor. Did you, how did you react to the bear? I locked the door. There you go. <laughs> you know, poor bears know how to open doors. Save that one also. <laughs> I was talking to a guy in the audience, asked him what he did for a living. He goes, I'm a cabinet salesman. I was like, do you like it? He's like, love it. I was like, what do you love about being a cabinet salesman? He goes, I like having dinner with my customers. Oh, I didn't know that was a wine and dine situation. Well, Todd, your cabinets are all installed. What do you think? I love them. I'll put my cocoa puffs in there really soon. Well, Todd, now that they're all installed, I guess it's bistro time, right? <laughs> time for the traditional post-cabinet installation celebratory dinner. What are you hankering for? I'm sorry, I'm having dinner with the guys who steam clean my drapes. It's been quite a day, breakfast with my exterminator. Happy hour drinks with my plumber. You know, maybe I can have lunch tomorrow. You know what? I'm going to apple picking with the guys who reek out of my bathroom top. <laughs> this is a true story. I was in New Orleans on tour about six months ago, and I started that joke. I said, yeah, I met this guy who was a cabin sales, and this guy yells out, that was me! <laughs> I looked down, it was him. <laughs> What a thrill for that dude, man. Imagine sitting there and I do a joke about you. It's unbelievable. I'm so happy for the guy. That might happen with the bear story. I still don't, I didn't follow that story. Still don't know where the bear was. If it was in the car, why would you lock the door? <laughs> I'm gonna be up all night with this one. <laughs> and we like calling people. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's inside or outside there. <laughs> yeah, she locked the door, yeah. I, from the, locked it from the outside, I think. But the bear's inside. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I, uh, my printer broke recently, sorry to bum you out. <laughs> the light flashed, it said paper jam. So I called up printer tech support, I go have a paper jam. The guy's like, paper jam, huh? Let me go do a little research on paper jams? Did I lay a new term on you? Isn't that the problem you make fun of at the call center? Like the phone rings like, oh, I wonder if this is gonna be a paper jam. <laughs> oh shit, it is. It's like calling up a steakhouse and asking if they know about baked potatoes. It's like calling me up and asking me if I know about standing ovations.
Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe you applauded at that. I feel so guilty. No, I, can, I was being a dick. I can be a dick sometimes. I really like feeling intellectually superior. I was at a bar in Austin, Texas, and the guy next to me was talking to the bartender, and he goes, I like the last drink you made me more better than this one. I was like, ooh. We got ourselves a dum-dum. A full 30 seconds passes. The guy turns to me, he's like, did I just say more better? It's like, how do you make that mistake and then catch that mistake? I liked it more better when you didn't know how to talk. Got that more better joke working. A month ago, that was dead in the water. <laughs> then come here, and it's such a successful moment in the show. <laughs> wow. That was my bear story. 